Okay, hello everybody. This video is going to be a really quick review of inheritance, static versus dynamic types, and dynamic method selection. We're then going to get into worksheet one, problem five. Okay, so let's talk about inheritance. In Java, whenever we're doing inheritance, we're going to use the keyword extends. Class B extends A means that B inherits from A, and it's going to inherit all nested classes all non-private methods, and all non-private instance and static variables. Okay, let's review static versus dynamic type. So static type is going to be specified during declaration. So if I over here had dog D is equal to new dog, the static type is going to be this thing over here on the left. So dog is the static type, okay? And the static type never changes. It is checked during compilation, and you might sometimes hear it referred to as a compile time type. What about dynamic type? Well, dynamic type is going to be specified during instantiation. In other words, when you're using the keyword new. So if we look over here with our dog example, it turns out that dog in this case is also the dynamic type. For this line of code. Okay, dynamic type is equal to the type of the object being pointed at if we're imagining our visual representation, and you might sometimes hear it referred to as the runtime type. So speaking of visual representation, representations, what is an appropriate way to, you know, deal with these static types and dynamic types in something like a box and pointer diagram? Well, what I personally like to do is I like to make um, two boxes, one that's a little bit bigger and one that's a little bit smaller. I put my static type in the smaller box and my dynamic type in the bigger box, okay? Now, um, how do we know if an assignment is legal or not? Well, basically, there, I have two lines of code here. The first one is parent p is equal to new child. This actually works. It's fine for us to assign a parent to a child. But the second line of code over here, child C is equal to new parent, that is not legal, okay? We cannot assign a child to a parent. So for me personally, the way that I actually remember this is I draw out this little diagram where the parent is above, is above the child, and I just remember the keyword down. And I think to myself that, you know, everything that is down from the thing that you are currently at is a legal assignment. So if I start off at the parent, well, the child is below the parent, so that's down, so that's legal, okay? Um, but if I were to start off um, at the child, like we do over here in this line of code, the child is, is, a, is, um, is under the parent. So moving towards the parent was act would actually be moving above and not down, and that's, that's, that goes against our keyword down. Now, I don't know if this is helpful to anybody. Um, it might just be unhelpful. So if you find it unhelpful, don't think about that. Just think about these two lines of code and just remember that the first one's allowed and the second one is not. Okay, so the last thing that we need to um, go over is dynamic method selection. So dynamic method selection is basically just um, a couple of steps that are always followed during compile time and um, runtime. So it can get a little tricky, but if you, if you remember these steps, I think you can get the hang of it. So in order to uh, talk about this, I'm just going to pretend like we have an imaginary fido.walk um, line of code, and let's start off with compile time. So at compile time, the goal is to jot down a placeholder method. Also, let's pretend like the um, like fido, let's say that it was like this line of code. Okay, so let's say that Fido has a dynamic type of dog, sorry, a, excuse me, a static type of dog and a dynamic type of poodle. What's going to happen during compile time is that we are first going to check the static type class, which is dog, for a method with signature walk. 
If found, we will jot it down. If it's for some reason not in the, um, the, the static type class, we will check the super class. Okay, so maybe dog was extending some class and we could look, we could keep looking, trying to look up a walk method in super classes. If we never find such a method, then we're gonna um, get a compile time error. So let's assume that we don't get a compile time error and we're able to move on to runtime. During runtime, our goal is basically to upgrade if possible. So right now we have we have some dot walk method that we've jotted down that is in, um, let's just say it was in the dog class. We, at runtime, we wanna see if we can upgrade and find something more representative of Fido who has a dynamic type of poodle. So we are going to start by checking the dynamic cl type class for a method with method signature walk. If found, we upgrade. Otherwise, we'll just use the method that we jotted down during compile time. Now, it's really important to note that you really have to make sure that the method signatures match um, perfectly. So let's say that I had a method signature of like dot walk in the static type class that I and I jotted that down during compile time. And then um, at runtime, I'm checking the um, dynamic type class and let's say that I come across a method that looks like this it says walk but then it has like it takes in some sort of int okay for whatever reason these two method signatures although they do have the same name they're actually not exactly the same right because the first one's not taking in an int and the second one is so that we in this case this is not this is not um the the same exact signature and we can't upgrade, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, you only upgrade if they really do truly have the same exact method signature. Okay, so with all that being said, we can get into the worksheet. Okay, let's now start working on problem five from the midterm review worksheet. It's called, Where's My Dad? So we see that we have a class fish and a class Nemo, which extends fish. So that means Nemo inherits from fish. And we see that the fish class has a swimming method, which takes in a, takes in a fish. And the Nemo class also has a swimming method, except it takes in a Nemo. And it has two find dad methods, one which takes in a fish and another one which takes in a Nemo. Okay. What happens after these lines are executed in the main function? So with the first three lines, let's just uh, consider whether or not we are going to get a compile time error. So I'm going to use the representation that I talked about in the review to start off by representing Dory, okay? So Dory has a static type of fish. I know that because it's to the left of the equal sign. And uh, Dory has a dynamic type of fish to the right of the equal sign. Okay, are there any issues with this? Well, no, this is totally fine. Nothing illegal with the assignments going on there. It'll compile just fine. Now the next line of code says that we have Nemo, sorry, um, it should be a lowercase n, Nemo. And Nemo has a static type of Nemo and a dynamic type of fish. Now, this is actually going to be a compile time error because remember, we're totally allowed to assign a parent equals a new child, but we cannot say that a child equals a new parent, which is what's going on in the second line over here. So this is going to be a compile time error. But for the purposes of this worksheet, we're just gonna keep going right along. So the next line of code is saying, let's just get rid of this. The next line of code, we're going to try this again. We're going to say Nemo, who this time has a static type of Nemo and a dynamic type of Nemo. Okay, so that's totally fine. We're not going to get any compilation errors. Um, that's totally legal. Okay, so now let's look at the next line. Dory.swimming, which takes in Nemo. Okay, so I'm going to go into uh, the static type class, which is fish for Dory, and look for a method which with method signature swimming. And I find one, right? It's taking in a fish F, but fish... So, sorry, let me actually do it like this. Okay, so 
Nemo has a um, static and dynamic type of Nemo, and this signature is taking in a fish. We This is actually not a compile error. This is totally fine because Nemo extends fish, and therefore Nemo is a subset of fish. So we can just print out swimming. Now, how about Nemo.swimming, which takes in Dory? So we can look in the Nemo class and we can see that there is a swimming method, but it needs to take in a Nemo. So fish is not a subset of Nemo and therefore we cannot feed in Dory who has a static and dynamic type of fish. Instead, we need to look into the super class in order to find a method that takes in um, a fish and we find one. So we will use the fish swimming method and we will print out swimming. Okay, now we say dory.finddad taking in Nemo. So Dory has a static type of fish. So we look in the fish class for a method with method signature find, da uh, find dad that takes in a Nemo. And we don't find, we don't find any uh, method that could take in Nemo, right? There's nothing with method signature find dad in the fish class. And this is going to give us a compilation error. Okay, now let's try Nemo.FindDad Dory. So we go into the Nemo class and we see that there are two find dad methods, one that takes in a fish and one that takes in a Nemo. Well, Dory is a fish, so we are going to use the um, method that's taking in a fish and we will print out, I know where my dad is. Now we are going to do Nemo.FindDad, which takes in a Nemo, and we look into the Nemo class and we see that there's a FindDad method that takes in a Nemo, and we will print out, where's my dad? Okay, that was a walkthrough for problem five. I hope this was helpful and good luck on the midterm.